Hey everybody, I'm glad you could join me. I'm Bud Churchward, WB7FHC, and today we're going to continue to work on our Nexus DRX Digital Radio Cross Patch. Take a look over here. I want to show you something in the instructions that's pretty important. Right here you're going to see this red box here. It says pins go up. That's because this part that we're going to put on right now, the header that is going to go on our uh, cross patch board has to go on the bottom and going up and uh, to be honest with you uh, I've built quite a few of these things and after building nearly a dozen of them I uh, was doing a live uh, video feed on zoom one evening and I soldered this header on the wrong side of the board uh, because I was chatting away and not paying close attention there's 40 pins here Put it in the wrong place it's really hard to get it off so make sure that when you put this on your board you're putting it on the bottom of the board and that the pins go up i'll get things set up here be right back with you like your own Nexus DRX kit, go to wd7fhc.com to find all the details. Okay, I've got the project board all set up right now on the pegs that um, Agnes created for me. I'm going to set it down on the bench and we'll solder it in. You'll see the cool thing about this peg is that the, the header can sit on this shelf here and although there's a gap here, I've compressed the board down, it's tight against there, and I'm ready to just go ahead and solder those 40 pins. Okay, one at each head, quick check don't get ahead of yourself okay let's get down the row here They look pretty good. Let's do the other half. I don't like the way the smoke is blowing today, so we'll get this fan turned on. This time, instead of blowing across the board, I'm uh, sucking the air away from the board. Look how it draws that smoke away so slick. That is nice. I'll take a quick look at it. Oh, wow. I don't know if you could see it in there, but there's one heck of a solder bridge right there in the center. We need to clean that up. That looks much better. I see one that I might just give a little extra squirt to it. And it's right here, I think. 
Yeah. Good job. Good job. Okay. That's done. Let's check that off and uh, get ready. So, the next thing we're going to do is add our uh, power supply, the power deck. Uh, it says in the directions here, power mezzanine. Uh, a mezzanine is a printed circuit board that is attached on top of another printed circuit board. Well, back here in our box of parts, it's getting a little empty. We're getting closer to the end. We have a DC to DC buck converter. That's this guy right here. Let's open it up. These things are handy. It's a great breakout board. The good news is that they're available. Anybody can get them. You can find them in so many different sources. And it's all built up for you. All the surface mount parts are already on this board. All we have to do is uh, mount it with these four corners on our board. And uh, let me show you how that's going to go. This is going to come in here and it's going to cover up all of the resistors that uh, we've been put in there. Uh, so they're going to be hidden. Take your last look at them because they're going to be out of sight. But this, uh, this little power deck right here will power our board. It'll power the FePi sound card and it's going to power the Raspberry Pi. It's going to take care of all of them. So let's see how we go about putting that on. Remember these guys? We're going to need four singles this time. Let's, uh, let's break them off here. Um, trying to break off a single pin is a little more difficult. So I'm going to use my clippers and, uh, and just cut off four. Oh, one went clear to the floor. We'll cut it again. And not worry about f hunting for that guy. Okay, so these four pins are uh, are going to hold that power deck on. This one right here I'm a little suspicious of. I think, uh, not, I'm going to try one more get a cleaner version of it. Yeah, I like that better. Now, this can be a little bit tricky. You... You you got to decide. You want the short end up or the short end down, and um, you're gonna put them in the four corners that you see here, and then you're gonna try to position the power deck on it uh, so that um, all four pins go through all eight holes, and that could be tricky, but it can be done. When you get it done, put a rubber band around it to kind of hold it in place. But because I've had to do several of these, I created this little jig uh, that makes it so much easier for me. And uh, we've shared this jig at our build parties, just pass it around the room. So I've already marked four corners on my little um, breadboard here that are the right uh, space uh, for our uh, power mezzanine, our, our little buck uh, converter here. So I'll set that there, and then that'll hold those in place a lot more steadier than on the board itself. But it's still a little tricky. I might need might need a little help there. Okay, yeah. So all four of those are down and sitting where they belong right now. Let me put some solder on those. So if you have a breadboard, you can uh, mark out four corners on there and do the same thing. You'll find that it's it's worth the effort. Um, I have done it without the jig, and it is a little tedious, but very, very doable. Okay, that looks good. Now, that'll come off of there. We won't need that anymore. When you go to put this board on, you're going to see that it says in 
on one side and out on the other. So we have in plus and in minus, out plus, out minus. And you want to make sure that those match up with the same text that you see here so that you're, you know you're putting it in in the right direction. And it just uh, pops in here. Um, let me put those two in. It looks to me like I want to do a little bit of uh, movement on those pens. The jig, uh, just need to bend these slightly. Get that one in place. And this one down here. Okay, it's one less. Well, there we go. When it goes, it goes. All right. Now, just to make sure that everything stays the way I want it, I'm going to throw a rubber band around this board before I flip it over. I want to hold this board down tight like so and kind of look at it here. I'm going to I'm going to just go ahead and loosen this guy up a little bit there. That allowed uh, the the lower part of the pin to go on down nice. Okay. We get to find those same four pins and solder them here. Now, you're going to be working very close to this header here. So, I'm doing that one first. Same with this end. And here. And here. Now, you could clip those pins off. If you think they're just up a little bit too high, they'll fly, but they you, you could probably also just let it go. But now our power deck is attached to the board. Now we're going to get our meter out, we're going to put some power on this board, and we're going to set the voltage. That'll be fun. This uh, next step can be a little bit tricky here. We're going to um, have to put our probes down here on this end of the board here to measure voltage. And I've, I've put some extra pads here for ground in 5 volts so you would have a place to put those uh, probes. But we also have to turn the screw on this potentiometer at the same time. So this is a, a time when it would be really handy if you had an extra set of hands. When we do our build parties, we we put two people on this project, and you got one person, the builder usually, adjusting the screw, and somebody else is holding um, the prongs on the on the board so that you can get a, a voltage reading. I'm going to do something a little different because I'm on my own, and I'm going to just kind of cheat on this a little bit. I have another meter right here, and and this one. I put these uh, terminals on there with alligator clips. And I'm going to take uh, those alligator clips and simply clip them on the end of these this little ribbon cable. And the cool thing about my ribbon cable is I've got these female um, plugs on the end over here which I can put on the pins that I soldered to the board. I'm putting the red on the 5 volt side and the brown one on the ground side. Then we'll turn the meter on right here and try to see if you're going to be able to see it there. Looks so. Maybe I can put a put a little something underneath it to hold it up at an angle. How's that look? There you go. You see those numbers. Next I'm going to need some power. I've got a, a cable here with two ends on it. 
I'm going to plug one end into our board. The other end into my battery pack. I'll see if I can put it on the 12 volt side. Turn that on. Red LED comes on. And the meter is already showing that it's got about 10, 10 volts on it. And that's because um, when we put 12 volts into a buck converter, you're not going to get 12 volts out, but uh, you'll get slightly less than that. This uh, screw right here is going to take a lot of twisting to start out with. The, the reason is, is that this thing is preset for around 17 volts, and we're not anywhere near that. So if I put my adjuster on here, you can use a screwdriver, but this is kind of handy once I drop it in. and I start turning, you will not see the numbers change. It's because we're still somewhere between 10 and 17 volts, but we are coming down. And you won't see the numbers change until we get down below that 10 volt level. And as soon as we do, those numbers will start to drop. There they go. Now you see them coming down. We're going to take it down to 5.2 volts. When you get close, slow down because you're going to find that just the slightest nudge is going to change it quite a bit. So let's go back up. There we go, 5.2 volts. Now it's very important that you do that before you connect this board up to anything else. As you saw, it was at 12, uh, 10 volts, almost 11 volts when we started. And that would take out your Raspberry Pi. That would take out the FiPi sound card. So it's important that you set the voltage on the buck converter before you attach this board to any of the other boards. So we're set. Now the cool thing is that it doesn't matter what the input voltage is, as long as it's greater than five or six volts, um, it's gonna have an output voltage of 5.2 volts. Well, that's a good place to stop for this time. When we get together again, we'll get out the hardware, the standoffs. We'll start putting all these boards together, building our stack. I hope you'll join me. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.